everybody and today we are here with another board game review. Today we will be reviewing Quadropolis. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we will be telling you that why you should play Quadropolis. A city building game in which we will be working as urban planners trying to decide how the city block should look like. So let's get on with it. Now, to understand this game, it's going to be very simple. This game comes from Days of Wonder and the production quality is what you can expect from a Days of Wonder game. That it's really gorgeous. The insert is gorgeous. The tile quality, the uh, components in this one are really nice, even though they are very simplistic. But let's into the game and then see if the game matches the production quality or not. Now, how the game work is going to work is that there is going to be a common board where from where you're going to draft the kind of city blocks that you are going to uh, invest in your city. So these can be different things like and these uh, this, so there is like a, achievements that you would desire to achieve. Uh, this is a handy reference card for scoring, which will be available. So there is one for each player. So they can always refer that how these things are going to be scored. But the yellow are residential buildings and the residential buildings score based upon how high you can stack up the residential building. So the bigger the residential tower is, the more score you will get. There are park tiles in this one. And the park score for the more residential buildings you build around the parks, then that's how much score you will get. The shopping malls get scored based upon how many people are coming to the shopping mall. How you will get people will come into that detail later. Then there are industries which are in red. The industry score based upon that how many shopping malls or ports it is adjacent to. Because from ports it's going to get raw materials and then it's going to produce some goods and then give it to the shopping malls. And that's why industry needs to be adjacent to those items. Then there are going to be office buildings or uh, government buildings and the government offices or government buildings are supposed to be one per district. And on your player board, there are going to be four districts in the game mode, which are depend, uh, shown by the different colors shown in the player board. So you want one government office per uh, district so that people can go there in case they have any kind of complaints or they are supporting the government there in uh, your city. Then there are going to be ports and the ports give you advantage if you can make rows or columns based on adjacent rows and columns based on ports. So the bigger the port, the more points you will get. So these are the different kind of scoring objectives. And based upon that, you would be trying out different kind of strategies that what are you trying to do in your city today? Because you will not be able to achieve everything in this game. There are limited blocks, there are limited turns. So you might have to pick and choose about what strategy you heavily want to invest in because going heavily uh, invested in one strategy is going to be better rather than a little bit of everything. Why? Because for example, because for example, if you were building ports, then if you had just two ports, it's going to give you three points. But if you were able to make four ports, then it's 12 points. So it's an exponential growth in points. Similarly, what for residential building, if it's a single story residential building, then you get one point. But if it is a four story residential building, you get 10 points. So the more heavily you invest in something, the more points you get. So you do want to invest in a same kind of thing a lot. But of course, that might not be enough. So a little bit of uh, in other, but Try to concentrate on one or two things, especially heavily. And based upon that, you are going to draft the tiles from here, turn by turn, put them on your board, and then we will see at the end how the scoring works. Now, how the drafting is going to work, we'll come to that now. So you have these four architects, which are given by the numbers one, two, three, four, and each player is going to have them one, two, three, four. On your turn, you can decide that, for example, I'm going to take a level three architect and I'm going to place him. For example, this is the port tile that I want. So I'm going to place this one here. So this shows me that the third in this arrow direction is the tile that I want to draft. So once I have drafted this, I will be placing this 
tile here which indicates that now this area is blocked because there is some construction going or whatever so this row is blocked and this column is blocked because something was picked up from here this tile i picked up using a number three and on my player board i'm going to have a number three column as well as a number three row and i can place this this level three architect allows me to place this in any level three row or column so for example i wanted to place this in the level three uh this column and that's where i can place i cannot place it anywhere else so accordingly the choices become limited based upon the number of architect you have used then it will be shall's turn what do you want to do this yeah so as a shard picks up a two this guy will change here but one thing also that i'm going to show now is that we also have to take some resources whenever we place these tiles so as you are building these tiles my tile showed that this port is going to generate two energy so i will be taking okay, well energy if you are not consuming energy later on at the end by the end of the game this energy is going to be converted into pollution later on but right now this is energy so right now for example in my reserve i can generate that i am generating energy for ishal she took a residential building so the people have started to move in the top side of the tile tells that okay what happens when uh, a residential building is placed Jimmy. so the people have started coming in which means two small meeples these are tiny blue meeples and they're made out of like some well don't place them on here so this is your reserve area so two people have come in and have moved into that building so now your city population has increased two but right now why we are keeping them on the side because Currently, they don't have anything to do. So currently, Ishal has two people who are out of job, who are doing nothing. They are neither shopping, they are not, uh, nor uh, going to any office, nor going working anywhere. If you see at the bottom, at the bottom left of any dial is going to be a requirement shown in a uh, hexagonal or octagonal shape, and that's the requirement. So, for example, for this port to operate. I need a worker, but currently I don't have a worker. Opposite is true for Ishal. She has a residential building which needs an energy. It needs lights. It needs gas. It needs energy to operate. She currently does not have energy. So maybe next time she wants to invest in a tile which does generate in uh, energy. For example, an in industry. So I see that I need people, and one of the ways I can get people is by investing in. another port because ports are not only good for for example uh getting um some factories or supporting factories but ports can help immigrate people as well and that's the second way of how you can play tiles in the game as well that you can other than placing them in rows you can place them in columns as well so for example if i want to take this tile i can place it on top here this is number 1 and it's going to allow me to pick this one up and that allows me to pick up number 1 tile and i can place it in any row or column which is depicting one ideally i want to make a row or column of port so maybe i will place it here which is a legal placement this port is going to bring in some immigrants which brings me two meeples and now immediately what i can do is i can put them in reserve that's fine but also what i can do is i can see at the bottom these two ports need two people to operate right isha mm -hmm. and i can send them to work that okay you start working at the port so the people the immigrants that have come in have just started working at the port and right now my ports are now operational So Ishal, it will be your turn. Remember, if Ishal now wanted to pick up this tile from this row using her number four, for example, she could have placed could have placed a number four tile here, and this is the fourth tile, which would give her three energy, one of which she does need to operate the building, but she cannot because this spawn is blocking that path. So this pawn indicates that this row and this column are currently blocked, and you cannot take any tiles from it. 
So that's the restriction you have to work with. So maybe she has to work with a different plan right now. Okay. And she took a smaller industry, which gave her two energy rather than three energy. And the pawn moves to a new location. And she needs to place that in a uh, fourth number row or column. It generated two energy. And now her one worker has found a job in the factory to work with as well, which are generating energy for her. So that's how the drafting works, that you are going to keep doing this. You will be, I'm left with two tiles. So let me uh, right now go through that. So let's say I'm going to invest in this number two, which will let me move here. And I picked up a government office and for number two, I want to build a government office here. Now this government office has no resources, either people or energy that are going to come to me, but it does have victory points written on top. And that are going to be useful at the end because this government office is directly going to give me some victory points, which will be given at the end. In addition to whatever were the bonus points going to come through, the agency rules uh, through other means. So Isha, what's your next or move? And she has invested in a government office as well. And that's where my problem has come because I was thinking of using my last number four to pick up by placing the number four architect to pick up from here. But once there is an architect in a row or column, you cannot place on top of the existing one. Now this has blocked my options. So maybe the only option valid, which I think is for me is Maybe do this, place a number four here and take a park and place this here, take a park and then place uh, that number four tile somewhere. Uh, and I am kind of not going good because number four here, I don't want to place here because it will block the path of my ports and I don't want to place on number four here because ideally I want a park somewhere in the center so that I can build residential buildings around it. So maybe it's not the ideal thing for me to do, but sadly, all right. So instead of this one, maybe I, what I want to do is go from this side and pick up this industry instead. So it's not that useful. It only gives me one energy, which I already have too much. And remember, any energy that I cannot use is going to score as a negative point for me because it's pollution. Pollution. Now, with industry, if you remember that industry adjacent to ports is going to be useful. So I'm going to place this since I picked this up using number four. I'm going to place it here because in future, I do want to place a port here. So in this way, and it will generate another energy for me. In this way, both Ishal has last turn. Uh, and once she is done, we will be done with the first round of the game uh, in which all the tiles from the first era are going to be used. Now, this is the insert of the game. The mayor pawn is now going to move since previously I was a first player, now it's going to move to Ishal next time in the new round. All these tiles will be cleared up and you will be able to see we are playing with number one tiles right now. Then are going to come number two tiles, then number three tiles, then number four tiles. And if we are playing with the expert level, then number five tiles will come as well. So either we'll be playing up to four rounds if we are playing the classic or easy mode or num uh, five rounds where we'll play if we are playing with the expert mode. But the rounds are going to continue in the same fashion. What we will be doing is taking all these tiles, putting them in a cloth bag, giving them a good shuffle. These tiles will be cleared up, whichever have not been used. And then from the box itself, there are these expert tiles or classic tiles that can be mixed in this bag based on which mode we are going to play. So I will mix those. And once I mix those, then I'm going to start placing them on the board. And that's how the round starts. One of the things when placing these tiles, because I didn't go through the uh, setup of these tiles, 
Some of these styles you must have observed were flipped face down. That's based on number of players. On the back side of these styles, sometimes it will be written three to four players. Sometimes it will be written four player only. So if you're playing with less than, uh, if you're playing with four players, all the tiles will be face up. If you're playing with three players, few tiles will be face down. If you're playing with two players, furthermore tiles will be face down as well. Be and then based upon whatever is remaining, you will be randomly placing them. All the architects will come back and then a new round begins. And that's how you play the game. Take up your text. At the end of the game, based upon we'll go through nearly our boards will be full. Ideally, if you place one tile in every section, your board will be full by the end. If sometimes you start stacking your residential buildings, then you might have empty spaces as well because you spent more time in building residential buildings and that's fine. There is no negative scoring for leaving empty spaces. You just are going to calculate your scores based upon what's written on the scoring sheet. At the end of the game, the game is provided with a beautiful score pad in which for each and every criteria, there is a section given in which you can mention the scores and then calculate the total. Whoever has the highest total is going to win the game. Now, I would like to mention that the game also comes with a small mini expansion. It's not a big one. It's a mini expansion called the Playgrounds, which are just one tiles per era, which are going to replace one of your park tiles with a playground tile. The parks are good for absorbing pollution. So in case by the end you are unable to consume the energy, then you can place one of these tiles on the parks and it will consume that uh, pollution. It will counter that pollution. But because if you... Trees, trees are not only. Yeah. Uh, but if you have a playground, then they give you a in habitat, a, a increase your population. But the problem is you will have to cut trees to make a playground so they don't absorb pollution. So that's a mini expansion, a slight variant, which you can add to your game or remove from your game based on how you want to play. Now, I would also like to mention that this is what I have shown you for the classic mode. There is also, as I mentioned, uh -huh. an expert mode as well, in which you will have an additional district on the back side. A fifth district is added. So instead of four different color districts, you will have a fifth district added to the game in the expert mode. Some additional tiles will come. There are multi-story additional buildings, some monuments that will be added. And on the back side of the scoring, there are additional rules for those scoring as well. And that adds to more variety. Start with the classic and then move into expert mode because with the expert mode, you will have so much more options that you get to deal with. So Ishaan, let's go back to now your views about the game. What do you think about the game? Um, it certainly is quite a nice game. I really like the components, especially the little meeples. And the art style is very fun and colorful. Yeah, the art style will remind you of the apps. Uh, mostly what you will see in kind of isometric views in the apps. That's what you will see here in this game as well. The yes. gameplay is quite simplistic and so it's very easy to play and understand. But I'm going to give it overall 6 out of 10 because these type of games is not my style. Why? I don't like them. Why? <laughs> Have you ever liked something without a reason? What, what you don't like about the game? I'm, I'm just... I am not a type for building type games. Like you have to build a civilization, you have to manage it. I'm not that type of person. <laughs> All right. So this I can is... only manage a single thing. Okay. I can only manage a small thing. Yeah, manage a small city. Manage a small, no, not a small city, like a, a small business. All right. So, uh, this is a very relaxing game. The rules overhead in this one is very low. Once you have played the first game of this one and you have understood how the scoring works, because the first game that you will play, you will be going back to this reference sheet 
again and again to understand okay is this going to give me more points or that is going to give me more points do i get some adjacency uh, scoring for this or not for some reason so, i did not do that <laughs> so for first game you will go back to this one but once you have gone through your first game your next games are going to be super quick so you will be oh these styles are available okay i'll place an architect here you they will place an architect okay i will be placing my architect and even by the time the other player is not done with their turn you would have already decided what's the tile that you are going to pick up uh, and really someone will block you or pick up this very exact tile and then you will make an alternate plan so the turns go really fast in this one plus it's a very relaxing game uh, because you're not thinking much you already know there are only five things to remember about how the scoring works and that's it you will be just working based on that okay and you will have a plan in your head beforehand i want to make ports i want to this time and every time you can try different strategies this time i want to go heavy on the government offices and have one office in each district that's my goal so every time the drafting opportunity comes first i'm going to draft the office of course that gives uh, the other people to understand as well what strategy you are going for and they might try to block you but the number of tiles that come in the game plus the opportunity for each player to become the first player for the next round plus there is a specific tile in this one if you get that one you automatically become uh, the first player for the next round so those kind of opportunities do balance it out uh, in giving opportunity to everyone into taking the tiles they want so it's very balanced in that point of view and thus stays relaxed uh doesn't become very cutthroat now as i said uh, this can be also a downfall of the replayability of the game as well that's the only negative why because once you have played through 5 6 7 times of this game you might be able to always think of the same strategy and you will be going through the same kind of motions over and over because now you know that i always want to have for example parks next to a flat layout of buildings rather than high tower because you have already calculated that based upon the high towers if i invest in this it is going to give me more points plus i will be able to use my energy based on the other things i'm going to do i'm always going to invest in ports so there will be some typical strategies that you might end up finding and you are always doing those so i do expect that going to the expert mode at that time will shuffle up a few things because it does add um, um, new tiles that add more things to think about but if you want to keep it relaxed keep in the classic mode but other than that only caveat i do think this is a relaxing game and if you are not playing games um uh, heavily and regularly then quadrupolis can stay in your collection for a very long time and whenever you want to have a quick and relaxing game you can take it out just start building your city and by the end you will be looking at the beautiful city that you have built people all around on the city everything energized uh, because it's not too polluted because if you are unable to either uh, put a meeple in a factory or give it in the energy that it requires that tile will get removed from the game and will not be counted for the scoring so the end product is going to look beautiful and uh, in the tile placement games that's always a fun thing to see what you have created and just enjoy that this is my creation this is my plan which has worked out So in the end it's a beautiful game a uh, beautiful story solution also provided by Days of Wonder the components are nice and overall a very pleasant game for families not for heavy gamers but for families it's going to be an enjoyable time that you spend with Quadrupolis hopefully that gave you a good idea about if this game is right for you or not that's it from us and happy gaming Go single businesses. Excuse you.